Welcome back. So we're going through this Roadmap 2030 document on how control theory is going to be central in addressing some of the largest societal scale challenges in the next coming decades. And in this video, I'm going to zoom in specifically on the topic of education, which is a real passion of mine, uh, very near and dear to my heart. And so that's chapter six of this roadmap. That's what I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, this is a quote, the success of a community depends on the education of its members. Okay, this is a quote I made up just now, but I think it's absolutely true. And this is not just true of the control community. If you have a community, this community will thrive or fall based on how well educated uh, its members are. And so this is a huge uh, kind of obligation and responsibility of us, especially those of us who are uh, more senior in the community to make sure that we're doing a good job of conveying our knowledge, educating the next generation, showing them the problems that are important, the pitfalls that we've made so that they can learn from them, uh, you know, kind of getting them off on the right foot as early as possible so that they have the tools they need to really take these technologies in control theory and go and solve the next generation of problems with them, okay? Again, something I'm super passionate about, it's why I get up in the morning, it is why I'm here today uh, with you. And it's honestly, it's one of the big purposes of this roadmap document. It's an educational effort. We wanna get people focused on the really hard problems. We wanna come together. We wanna get young people excited about the opportunity for control theory to help. Good. Uh, and there's a lot of recommendations. So in this document, there are some recommendations like things we should do are, you know, actually really address and go back to the, the drawing board. Should we be starting with frequency domain or time domain? That's a question that doesn't often get asked. I know that there are a few places in the world, uh, you know, that start off in the time domain. My book is one of them. I know uh, Caltech, you know, I learned where I learned control theory, we started in the time domain. Most of the rest of the world, uh, you know, starts off in the this frequency domain dominated world. That's, that's very uh, historical. And it's not clear that that's how things should be forever. I'm not saying we should always start to, you know, with systems of differential equations, but at least we should be having these discussions. What's the good starting ground? What is the broadest way we can introduce control theory to the world? This is something that's usually introduced in a fairly advanced mathematical concept. Uh, what are ways that we can introduce control theory earlier to people? Okay, so I, I again, I work in the intersection of, of control theory and machine learning and data science. And there are these discussions in every engineering department I have visited in the last few years. How do we make it so that there is an introduction to data science or an introduction to machine learning class for first year undergraduates in college? I would ask the same question for control theory. Control theory is one of the most central and important uh, hinge pin ideas in all of engineering. It ties together so many different fields of engineering. They all come together in this systems and control perspective. So how do we integrate this into the first year curriculum for undergraduates? How do we get high school students excited about these? And that's one of the things that this roadmap for societal scale challenges is trying to address is a lot of young people really do get motivated by the good that they can do and by getting people focused on challenges that control theory can, can actually help address at a high level, not even thinking about the mathematics necessarily, that's a pretty smart way of getting people engaged. So really important, how do we get people engaged earlier, more broadly? Um, sometimes that means changing the title of courses, dusting off your, you know, uh, your, your control theory class and maybe thinking about what is a modern title or a modern take on that topic that can get broader engagement. Um, you know, more diverse audiences, younger audiences. Very important for our community to live and thrive is to educate everybody. Um, another kind of key recommendation and point in this chapter is that we need to be focusing more on computational methods, right? So much of control theory in the olden days was pencil and paper by hand, when in reality this is very much a living and computational um, 
field, right? So when I compute a Bode plot or an Iquis plot, I'm using software and really making sure that we are getting our students up to speed with the modern computational approaches to these things is critical. And I've just shown one example here. I don't want to play favorites. There are lots of good control theory packages in lots of good languages. There's MATLAB, there's Python. You can do this um, you know, to some extent in, in most languages. I do think that the fact that Python control um, is free and open source, you can download this anywhere in the world and get started immediately, is a pretty amazing resource. And so you know, when I think computational, I think open source uh, and open, because again, that's going to get the broadest engagement. And that's a pretty major transition, right? Like when I teach control theory today, I'm much more likely to do it in MATLAB because that's where all of my historical notes and you know kind of lectures are prepared in. But again, I think we owe it to ourselves to think about what are the technologies of the future. Is if open source is something we as a community believe in and believe is going to be useful uh, in an educational. Uh, platform, then we really need to start embracing that and, and moving towards that and, and kind of putting our time uh, towards, towards that effort. And I think this is a very commendable uh, goal where these tools have actually been really largely ported over to, to Python for free. Uh, again, another recommendation is if you want to get students excited about control theory, show them how it interfaces with machine learning, which is one of the greatest technological advances of our of our generation, if not of all time, right? Like we are starting to, to see that perhaps machine learning is gonna be up there with electricity and the electric light in terms of broad impact on society, you know, like up there with the internet and cell phones. And so really, you know, we would be doing a disservice to ourselves and our students if we don't show them this rich history and future at the intersection of machine learning and control theory. Okay, I of course have, you know, dozens of videos on this. This is what what I research and my, my lab researches is, is this intersection. But you know, we as a community really need to be embracing this. And, and I think control theory, for a number of reasons, was a little bit uh, on the cautious or, or, or hesitant side early on to adopt these methods, which I think is reasonable to be cautious and, and prudent, because control theory relies on certifiable and you know, guaranteed performance and robustness and stability and things like that. But increasingly, you know, we can't just ignore this huge emerging field of machine learning. We need to be embracing this. We need to fold it into our curriculum. We need to train our young people to know when it can be trusted, how it can be used, and what the challenges are for the future. Okay, and I think we're actually doing a pretty good job of that now, which I'm excited. I just went to, you know, the ACC American Controls Conference, and this was on everybody's mind. And that kind of uh, now it's cautious optimism of how we're actually going to use these tools to advance uh, the field. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, another piece of this and recommendation from this cha chapter is maybe these large college courses is not the best way to teach young people control theory. Maybe we want a more modular approach. Maybe we want you know, more focused and tailored modular approaches to, to learning. This is something, again, I'm super passionate about. I've been doing for years. Brian Douglas from, uh, Matt, uh, from, from YouTube's Control Lectures has also been doing this even longer uh, in control theory. So these are just two examples of many uh, researchers and educators who are putting modular on online uh, control theory curriculum out there for free on the internet so students can kind of pick and choose and build their knowledge in a much, much more flexible way. And kind of my uh, rationale for putting together my control boot camp, which has been pretty um, widely used um, across the world to my, you know, much to my um, you know, very, very much my, my pleasure to see that being used by people. Um, I just wanted my students to get a really rapid crash course into control theory that didn't take them 30 hours. I wanted you know, a five or 10 hour, really, really high level, short, focused introduction. And it turns out people across the world want that too. So again, for all of us um, on both sides of this, on the educators and the senior uh, control theorist side and the young people who want to be learning control theory, I think we can be doing you know, a, a better job of making our work interesting and getting it out there in this modular, flexible, really uh, user-friendly way. And all of these videos, for example, you know, I've had code now in MATLAB and Python. That was something, you know, it took a lot of time and a lot of effort, but I've noticed um, when I talk to students, it really pays off because it allows them to learn the way that is best for them. 
you know, similarly, all of those videos in control theory are following a couple of chapters in this book um, by myself and Nathan Kutz. This is not just a shameless plug for my book. I want to point out all of the sections, every single section in this book has a short video associated with it with codes in MATLAB and Python. And that's the kind of thing we're gonna need in the future if we really want our, our, our education to hit everybody in the world so that everybody knows how important control theory is. We need this to you know, in, integrate computational methods, integrate uh, modern advances in machine learning, be modular and flexible, have open source code to go with everything so that people can play with it themselves and change things and learn in that way, okay? I hope you can tell this is something I love. This is uh, truly one of my passions and one of the things that I feel uh, driven and called to do is to educate people, especially in control theory. And I know my amazing colleagues, you know, many of them co-authors on this roadmap document, have so much knowledge to impart to, to the young generation. I really wanna see this, um, you know, be fruitful. And again, our success depends on the education of our, of our you know, our, our new members. Um, one last parting thought uh, in those veins. I don't think I've said this uh, enough, but all of my videos in my control bootcamp are really inspired by the control education I received um, when, when I was in school. Most of this was you know, from Richard Murray at Caltech and Clancy Rowley at Princeton, and Clancy learned a lot of controls from, from Richard Murray. So you know, I really also wanna point out that this is a multi-generational affair. Like We learn from great teachers, and then we become teachers to other people and pass that along. So, so two things. Uh, thanks to, to Richard and Clancy. And also, you know, let's, let's pass this forward and actually make sure we're, we're educating the next generation. Okay, thank you.